Welcome to Knife Chats. If you like what you see, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, share it with friends, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Thank you. Well, I done did it again. I went out and bought another Great Eastern Cutlery Knife. Uh, now, the first one I bought was about a year or so ago, and that was uh, the Northfield Unexcelled Number 12 uh, 4-inch Toothpick. And I uh, really like that. Sandbar stag handles. And then a month or two ago, I'm watching uh, Big Red EDC. And he's got this Templar. I had seen it for a while and was really interested in it. And uh, <laughs> I saw his and it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get it. And so I went ahead and picked it up in the Caribbean Blue Acrylic. And so I've got that one. And now... Here it comes, number three. And I guess that shouldn't be surprising if you're buying a higher-end knife. Um, originally, you know, you look at the price of it and you think, man, do I want to spend that much money? Because it's a bit of a gamble, especially if you're buying it sight unseen. You're buying it through mail order or something. But once you get the first one and you realize that the quality really is there, then picking up a second one becomes a little bit easier. And then uh, once you get the second one, it's like, well, why not go ahead and get a, a third one? And uh, I guess that's what's happened. And I had a bunch of points saved up on DLT trading, and I thought, well, I will uh, throw some of those points towards a, um, a Great Eastern Cutlery knife. And so I started, I went to the site and I started looking uh, at the various knives. There was a couple that I was looking at picking up. One of them that I wanted was uh, regretfully sold out already, and I know it's not going to really come back, so no reason to put it on a wish list or anything. And then the other two were pretty cool, too, and I was thinking, yeah, I got to go ahead and grab those. Uh, but then I saw this one, and uh, I saw it, and it's like, no, that's the one I want. I'm going to grab that one before it gets sold out, and so I bought it. And mind you, uh, when I was looking at this, I had not seen the uh, tube. I had no idea what the uh, tube was going to look like on it. But this is probably the coolest tube I've seen from uh, Great Eastern Cutlery to date. I just love the uh, Titiute Cutlery Beaver Tail on there. Traditional sportsman knives. And the one I got is listed right here. 971119 jig brazilian cherry and by brazilian cherry they're talking about cherry wood out of brazil um to explain the pattern number the 97 is the pattern number for the knife the 97 is the allegheny knife uh by great eastern cutlery and allegheny is what they call their uh coke bottle frame the first one uh, refers to the type of blade which is a clip blade a standard clip blade. The second one refers to the number of blades in the knife. So there's one blade in the knife. And then the 19 is the year of production, which was 2019. And so that's what we have there with the tube. And let's take a look at the knife because we're not here to look at tubes. But man, that is a cool looking tube. So now the knife came in the typical way in the tube, wrapped in the very heavy wax paper that Great Eastern Cutlery uses. Um, Titiute is one of the various trademarks of, uh, of Great Eastern Cutlery. Another one is Northfield, obviously. I think the other one is Farm and Field, I think. I'll uh, put it in the notes. But in any case, here was the knife and the beautiful cherry wood handle. And... Uh, what sold me on the knife is right there, the shield, that uh, beautiful beaver tail shield. And beaver tail is a trademark of uh, Great Eastern Cutlery. It might have lapsed, I'm not sure, but I know uh, they've been using the beaver tail trademark for some years now, at least 20 or so years. Um, and uh, it's usually used on uh, wood handled knives. This one is Brazilian cherry wood. And if you notice the uh, the jigging on there, uh, that is their beaver tail jigging that they use on there. So, um, and I cannot imagine, I know they use the beaver tail shield on other patterns of knives, 
but I cannot imagine a knife that is better fitting for the beaver tail shield and the beaver tail name than a coke bottle simply because of the shape of the coke bottle frame i mean the back end of this knife is really kind of like a beaver's tail so the, yeah, i can't imagine a, a better name for a coke bottle knife uh, it, like i said this is um what um Great Eastern calls an Allegheny. That's the, the name pattern they use for their number 97, the Allegheny. Everyone else in the world calls it a Coke bottle. But I could definitely see this just being called a beaver tail because of the shape of the handle. And there are knives that are known as beaver tail knives that have a handle shape that is very similar to this. It's a very flat handled knife. There's also uh, beaver tail blades, which are big flat blades that are rounded at the end too. Um, okay, enough about the beaver tail name. Um, let's take a look at the knife overall. Um, overall length of the knife, I'll have it in the uh, specs at the end too, is right at uh, four and five eighths of an inch is closed. The blade length, I believe they give it as three and seven eighths of an inch, but I'm seeing it at three and three quarters of an inch overall length of the knife completely opened up and everything is um, about eight and a half inches maybe a little more maybe a little less um, notice that uh, beautiful blade look at that swedge on that blade and uh, the nice long pull everyone talks about match striker pulls I think a match striker pull on this blade would just ruin the elegance of it and uh, there you go with the uh, beaver tail uh, blade etch on there which is pretty cool too and then finally you see uh, uh, Tsiriyut cutlery made in USA can I get that to show any better yeah there we go Tsiriyut cutlery made in USA uh, backside Gek car C-A-R 971119 Gek obviously Great Eastern cutlery car C-A-R um, they use that for the carbon blade, so it's 1095 carbon steel. Now you may have just noticed on the back side of the blade, we have a, the PPP there in a circle, and that stands for Premier Pattern Production. You'll find that on uh, Tidiyut knives uh, from Great Eastern Cutlery. It's the only place that uh, has it or the only knives that have it. They don't use it in their Northfield line or any other line uh, of Great Eastern knives. It's only the Tidiyut uh, ones that have the uh, PPP on the blades. Um, like I said, um, Brazilian cherry wood, and if you notice here, it is very well matched. It's held on by four pins, one of them being the back spring pin. Uh, and then you see the nickel silver uh, shield of the beaver. And if we open up the blade here and look inside, if we can see it there, see right down there, straight through, you will see the pin for the beaver is right there. See it there? The pin for the beaver. You can kind of catch it in the glint. Um, and that is uh, an important thing to remember is that all of these shields on Great Eastern knives are pinned in place as well as glued. Um, beautiful brass liners and uh, nickel silver bolsters on both ends. The, it's, I love the end cap on this, the short end cap and the very long, almost Barlow-like bolster at the top, which is very typical of your traditional coke bottle knife and i mean this thing is about as traditional of a coke bottle as you're going to get a lot of people have started turning coke bottles into like a copperhead top on it and that kind of just ruins the whole shape of the coke bottle frame um yeah i i don't i don't know what else to say man this knife is just beautiful um i already talked about that long pull but if you notice, a very good, very good half stop. I would say it's a medium pull on it. It's not extremely hard, but man, does it lock in place. You hear that? You hear that snap? Watch, listen to this one. You hear that? And you can actually, no problem letting this thing drop. Because uh, 
look at how much give you have with the kick. And when you look at that kick, there is barely any kick there at all. But if you look inside, you will see that um, the kick, if I can get the light to show into there, the kick is actually in the backspring itself at the very bottom of the backspring. You'll see that the backspring is thicker at the very end than uh, the rest of the backspring. So that's how the kick can be so small on the blade because um, the backspring is actually thicker at the very top and then it thins out a little bit. So you don't have to worry about the blade hitting anywhere. And the lockup is just fantastic. Uh, see there, you can definitely see where it hits and there is a little bit of a, uh, a spot there. You can feel it, it definitely catches there, but it's not a real problem. Um, nice thick spine and a beautiful swedge on the blade. And if you notice, there is a slight recurve to the belly of that clip blade. Uh, I wouldn't call it a mirror polish. It's more like a a very shiny uh, satin finish. Uh, definitely still a, uh, a uh, fingerprint magnet. And you're definitely going to want to work. Ooh, almost cut myself. You really want to work on uh, keeping those fingerprints off of this because this is 1095 carbon steel and it will rust if you're not careful with it. But it comes uh, razor sharp with a great snap. And if you can see there, the lineup is impeccable. Um, man, it's just tight all around. A beautiful knife. And definitely... Uh, you know, overnight became my favorite uh, Great Eastern Cutlery knife, uh, mainly because of the uh, shield there. But the uh, wood handles are just really fantastic too. And the um, the jigging on those handles, even it is like almost perfectly matched. The brass pins are recessed a little bit with the exception of the one for the uh, for the back spring, which is almost always kind of rounded and a little proud, which is not a problem. The only way you can tell that you are transitioning from bolster to wood is the wood is a nice warm feeling and the bolsters are kind of cold. That's how you can feel the difference. But um, yeah, you're not catching anything. Um, it's just a nice smooth transition. Brass liners are nice and clean on there too. Um, at first I thought there was a space in the brass liner and the, uh, and the back spring, but it was just a little black mark. I wiped it right off. It's gone. Everything is so tight. It's unbelievable. And, uh, man, it just rocks open. And obviously being a four and a half inch handle, you got plenty of handle to grip on to. The knife is just a fantastic knife with a beautiful, uh, blade edge beautiful uh, shield, beautiful wood handles. Um, it's just, an, it's, uh, it's more than a knife. It is truly a functional piece of art. And uh, my hat's off to Great Eastern. Yeah, you're going to pay a little bit more for it, but um, it's worth every penny that you're gonna pay for this. And I know that uh, a year from now, this knife is going to double in uh, in price. Once they're gone, they're gone, and that's the problem with them. So uh, if you got the money, um, you, you need to buy it right away. Otherwise, it's just going to cost a whole lot more later. And so what I'm going to have to do is start throwing more money in my piggy bank because uh, I know I see other Great Easterns in my, uh, in my future. And... Uh, <laughs> These are knives that are at the very top end of uh, my knife buying ability. I rarely spend $100 on a knife. Uh, and when I do, it's going to have to be a quality knife. And uh, that is definitely the case with Great Eastern Cutlery. These are what exactly what everyone says. They are probably the best traditional pattern knife being made today. Um and they are definitely worth the price, but they are going to be uh, a high price. 
I'm not going to, I'm not one of those people who go around saying that if you don't have this knife, then you're not a knife collector. Because, uh, quite frankly, uh, uh, I didn't have one of these knives for the longest time. And, uh, and I can understand why. And I definitely consider myself a knife collector. But if you can afford one of these, and if you're into Coke bottles, this is definitely a knife you need to go ahead and, uh, consider saving up for, or, um, uh, at least drooling over, um, if you can't, uh, buy one. Uh, yeah. And it took me a long time to do this video. And it's going to take me a long time to get off this video because I just like looking at the knife. So what I'm going to do now is, uh, let you go. I've got a, a slideshow that shows you some, um, uh, close-ups of the knife, uh, following this part. And so you may want to uh, stick around for that. But in the meantime, I'm going to stop recording and I'm just going to uh, drool over the knife a little bit more in private. Did I tell you how much I like this tube? I really do. This is so cool. I just love that beaver tail artwork on this tube. Uh, and it's really inspiring me to uh, consider doing a video on like my top 10 knife boxes. You know, the boxes in my knife collection that just really look cool. Uh, let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. If it is, then uh, I will definitely uh, consider doing it. In any case, uh, there you have it. Talk to you soon. Thank you for visiting Knife Chats. I hope you enjoyed your time here. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel and ringing that notification bell so that you will be notified when the next episode of Knife Chats is up online. Thanks again. See you soon.